Hi everyone, and welcome to Jimmy Draws Art. I'm Jimmy Dragon. So I've been playing on my mind about art topics lately and what I should talk about. Lately, I feel that I should talk a bit more on art topics. And that brings me to the topic today. Why art? Why do this thing called art? What was it that brought me here to where I am today? Why do I keep striving to do this thing called art? What was it that kept me doing art? Where so many others decided to put down the pencil or crayons or whatever art supply they used? Well, I think to answer this question, I have to go way back in time to when I was a wee little child. One of my oldest and earliest memories that I had about art actually wasn't a good one. I was in kindergarten or preschool, not too sure. It was when I was five years old. I was coloring with a crayon and there was an assignment from the teacher to color in a box. Pretty simple, but she told us to color inside the box. I chose the color outside the lines. I didn't want to listen to the teacher. I remember that I liked color and then I wanted to keep doing it. I remember that the teacher was very upset with me. She sat with me and tried to force me to color inside the lines. I wasn't having any of that. She had me stay after class for 15 minutes to get me to color the box the right way. I wouldn't do it. I was a very stubborn kid. So as an act of punishment, she had me sit in the coat closet for a five minute timeout. Of course I had no idea what I did wrong and was crying my eyes out in the closet. I did end up going home after that with the babysitter neighbor girl who was watching me till my mom got home from work. Don't remember if my mom knew about this. Most of my time after this in my memory is a blank, but I do know that as a kid, I liked drawing. It was also sometime around fifth grade that I still remembered that I liked drawing. There was this one drawing that I did that I no longer have, where I drew this silly alien looking dude who drove a futuristic car that floated. Flying cars. I thought we would have those in the year 2000. It was the mid 1980s. What can I say? I was a little eight year old kid at this time. Anyway, I didn't draw much during those days. I was busy playing imaginary war with my GI Joes and Transformers. But what got me into picking up the pencil again was when I was in high school. I wanted to do it a little more seriously. I saw a friend who I just met drawing little comics of the Pillsbury Doughboy. Honestly, I thought that this was the coolest thing in the world. I wanted to try that out. So that night I went home, pulled out a whole bunch of loose paper. I had one of these report folders and about 20 pages in that folder and I started to draw. I drew a short story about one of the Jim Henson Muppets, Gonzo. I called the comic Gonzo's Revenge. It was a story about how Gonzo was going around the school and beating people up and destroying the school. Honestly, I was a kid who was the target of bullies back then, and this comic drawing became my outlet to unleash my frustrations. If a teacher or someone were to ever lay eyes on my early drawings, I would be sent to a counselor or something like that for sure. Maybe I should have. Anyway, over the years, I developed my comic techniques when I was in high school. I would hop over to the local comic book shop that was just down the street from the school. I would buy all kinds of comics that interest me if I had the money. Mostly we would be studying drawing by watching video recordings of TV shows like DuckTales and Rescue Rangers at the time. The Disney Afternoon was our go-to for shows to watch after school. After that, we would also watch The Simpsons and copy Mac Groening's style. We would get his other books that he wrote before he did The Simpsons. We would copy from that as much as we could. A lot of my comics during high school copied his drawing style. However, one style I did copy from was from my friend Scott. He would draw these human-like dragons that walked and talked. I believe he got his influence by this one artist, R.C. Manson. And the picture he had in his room was this one called The Computer is Down. I always loved this picture. I loved his dragon characters. This also inspired my love with dragons as well. So this event also inspired me to draw my own dragon character, Jim Dragon. He was also called the Red Dragon. Yeah, I didn't have that inspiring of names. I modeled Jim to be a Chicago police officer or detective who somehow had the payroll to afford a Ferrari F40. Yeah, it was my fantasy comic, so whatever. My friend Scott had his dragon character, Bob Vandersnoot, who also owned a Porsche 911, and he too was a police officer. Well, these characters and others, after the fact, were modeled after old 80s action movies. It also got to the point where my character Jim was retired as an old 1980s has-been action star and got his potbelly that he has from eating barbecue ribs all the time. 
This was also where I created his son, Baby Jimmy. I got the inspiration to create Jimmy from watching the old Disney show Dinosaurs. I got the idea from the baby in the show when he would yell, Not the mama! to his dad. I would also add that to my comics as well too. Not the mama! Not the mama! Not the mama! Over the years, Baby Jimmy became my online name. I mainly use the name Jimmy Dragon today, as you can tell by the name of this channel. I drew my old comics in that dragon style and in the Simpsons style. My turning point to get into anime was around my third year in high school. I'm not too sure when, but it was around that time. See, I was in my local comic shop and I was picking up a book called Previews. It was a book that you can get to preview upcoming comics and other products that you can buy. But as I was looking through the pages, I came across an ad for a comic called Ninja High School by Ben Dunn. At the time when I saw this ad, I honestly didn't know it was called anime. I did sort of know the style from watching old shows like Voltron and Robotech. Honestly, I also didn't know that the art style was from Japan. So I went to the comic book store and I picked up Ninja High School. I took it home and discovered that it was art from Japan. Because I knew that fact, I created characters for a comic for my character Jim Dragon. See, I remembered weeks before, I watched the old Punisher movie from 1991 with Dolph Lundgren. I loved that movie. And honestly, I still do. Anyway, I did a rip-off of the movie and did a comic with Jim as the Punisher, and I made the anime characters as the Yakuza from the movie. Yeah. Anime characters were the Asians in my comic. Oh, how cringe is that now that I think about it. Anyway, this was my point where I really started taking off with the anime. I was shortly after this point that we discovered that this was anime and we wanted to see more of it. We found an old video store that actually rented anime. I think the first ones we picked up were Akira and Project Echo. We then shortly after that picked up Dominium Tank Police and Appleseed. We pretty much watched everything they had to offer. Me and my friend Scott took off running when we saw these. We went deep into the rabbit hole with the late 80s and early 90s anime. It was pretty much my new outlet during these times. So yeah, I was watching anime before it was cool to watch anime. My drawing inspirations took off from there. When I was also in this time in high school, fantasy books became a thing for me. Other friends I met were also into fantasy books, and I got ideas from those books I read to do other comics. One thing led to another, and I came up with my comic Romancing Dragon and my character Ella Linsack. The one you see me drawing on the channel from time to time. I came up with Romancing Dragon I think in high school, but Ella came after high school. I'm not sure of that order, but it pretty much came around during that time. Wow, it was interesting looking back at this time, at what inspired me to keep going with the artwork. Or really, to pick up the pencil again. Not sure if I ever really stopped. I have been drawing from time to time throughout my life. I look at myself and I know that deep through in my body, I am an artist. I will always have and I hope I always will be. I think that this is where I will try to encourage you to keep going. Keep looking to your dreams to become an artist. I feel that is what I am here for, to become an artist. I probably don't draw as much as I used to during the old days of my life. I try to keep going. There are times where I will stop because, well, life gets in the way. I say keep going. There is nothing stopping you except yourself. Life will get busy. Life will get busy. People will say you shouldn't be doing this. I have had a lot of this happen throughout my life. I have made mistakes too by listening to some of these people. I probably would be in a different spot if I had done things differently. Maybe, or maybe not. Who knows? I am here where I am today, and I'm happy knowing that I'm still making art. So let's continue making art together. Put in the comments below what made you the artist you are today. What inspired you to keep going? Who are your influences in life? So again, let's keep making art. And if you like what I had to say here, please check out this video over here. Also subscribe to the channel for more content from me in the future. With that said, I thank you for watching and we shall see you with the next video. Thanks and bye bye.